Vivint Smart Home Arena. Kicking off this exclusive arena presentation is the president of the Utah Jazz and the Larry H. Miller Sports and Entertainment, Steve Starks. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today. In the Larry H. Miller group of companies, today is what we refer to as a red letter day and we are thrilled to share it with you. For 25 years, Vivint Smart Home Arena has been an integral part of downtown Salt Lake with more than 1.8 million annual visitors for sports and entertainment events. We have hosted a remarkable array of events from concerts by Garth Brooks and U2 to Disney shows, the NBA Finals, and the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. Located in downtown Salt Lake City, Vivint Smart Home Arena and the Larry H. Miller Court originally opened in 1991 as the home of the NBA Utah Jazz and is well known for being one of the hardest places to play for visiting teams. With seating capacity of about 20,000, the facility was built faster than any other arena at the time in its construction in 15 months and 24 days. No doubt through the years, the arena has proven to be an invaluable as a community gathering place, and we seek to restore its presence as the most high-tech, state-of-the-art arena in the Intermountain region for the next 25 years. The significance of this arena renovation announcement is supported by numerous dignitaries that are with us today. Please allow me a moment to recognize these important individuals. We have with us today representatives from the Salt Lake City Mayor's Office, members of the Salt Lake City Council and Redevelopment Agency, representatives from Salt Lake County, the Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox, Gail Miller and Kim Wilson, and the Miller family represented by Greg, Steve, Brian, Karen, Zane, and Carissa. We also have with us members of the Board of Directors from the Larry H. Miller Group. Clark Whitworth, CEO of Larry H. Miller Management Company is with us today, as well as Hall of Fame coach Jerry Sloan and his wife Tammy. Representatives from AEG, Live Nation, Feld Entertainment, and many of our Larry H. Miller Sports Entertainment champion partners and other key sponsors. Todd Peterson and Alex Dunn and others from Vivint Smart Home, our naming rights partner, are also with us today. Lastly, we're thankful to have many of our premium season ticket holders that are with us and that have been so supportive for many years. The arena renovation is good news for one of our most important stakeholders, and now those are our guests. Whether you are a fan of country music, basketball, pop stars, big truck shows, or family-friendly spectacles, this renovation will benefit everyone from fans to families and small businesses and large corporations. Building upgrades will support the safety of our guests, make us more environmentally friendly through solar and other energy improvements, modernize technology, expand concession offerings, and develop a seating and arena atmosphere that patrons will truly enjoy. By choosing to renovate the arena instead of relocating and rebuilding, we are demonstrating our unwavering commitment to downtown and the revitalization of its west side and taking a fiscally responsible approach in partnership with Salt Lake City. The arena will fund the initial investment for the $125 million renovation. We thank the, we thank the redevelopment agency and the mayor's office for, of Salt Lake City for approving a performance-based incentive program in support of this project. We believe there will be a tremendous return on that investment. With this renovation, the projections for economic impact over the next 25 years will be $3.2 billion for Salt Lake City and $4.5 billion for the Wasatch Front. There is strong enthusiasm for this project and partnership as the right course of action. A first class vibrant downtown arena will contribute to the economic vitality of the region, improve the quality of life by providing world-class entertainment and rally and unite citizens through the fandom of sports. To make this renovation a reality, we are working with the best in the business. Icon Venue Group is providing developmental, operational, and project management support. Icon has a project por portfolio that reaches virtually every professional sports league in North America and Europe. Examples include the new arena for the Sacramento Kings and the renovation of Wrigley Field in Chicago. SCI Architects is the lead architectural firm with more than 100 sports-related projects, including recent renovations at Madison Square Garden and the Forum in Los Angeles. We are excited today to announce that Utah-based Layton Construction Company will serve as the general contractor for this project. 
Leighton is a nationally ranked and highly regarded contractor that has expertly enhanced the skyline of Salt Lake City and beyond. Just as you think of the trio of Hayward, Favors, and Gobert, we also have a tremendous team moving forward with ICON, SCI, and Leighton Construction. I also want to acknowledge and thank our team within Larry H. Miller Sports and Entertainment and Larry H. Miller Real Estate. Specifically, I'd like to recognize the leadership of Jim Olson, who has been our point guard on this project for the past year. Steve Miller, who chairs the renovation committee of the board, has also provided invaluable leadership and support of the project. Our next speaker is the founder and CEO of Icon Venue Group. He has been a facility development executive for more than 26 years with a project resume that includes NBA, NFL, NHL, and MLB stadiums and arenas. Please join with me in welcoming Tim Romani. Thank you, Steve. This announcement is so much fun for me, and I appreciate very much being included in the program, so, so thank you. So as Steve mentioned, I'm Tim. I'm with Icon Venue Group, and we're the owner's representative and project manager for the arena renovation project. Our job is to actively manage the design and the construction teams to achieve the improvements that the arena owners desire for this particular project, and also make sure that the project comes in on schedule and on budget. Having managed the development of 10 new arenas for NBA and NHL clients around the country and around North America, uh, plus recently completing renovations for the San Antonio Spurs, the Denver Nuggets, the Minnesota Timberwolves, LA Lakers, and Oklahoma City Thunder, ICON, we're familiar, very familiar with the NBA arena guidelines and requirements. We're also fully up to speed with what the most modern best practices are uh, for these venues. The NBA connected us with Larry H. Miller Sports Entertainment about a year ago. We met with the executive team and with the owners and evaluated the opportunities with a focus on number one, enhancing the fan experience to access and enjoy their time every second of the, of the time that they spend in the arena. Second, we're charged with increasing the building's sustainability factor. Third, we're charged with improving the connection that the fans experience with the players and the performers, and really their overall participation when they're in the building. We were immediately impressed by the arena ownership and the executive team and their obvious commitment to this community and their fans. Most sports facilities are renovated with revenue enhancement as the primary objective, no doubt about that. Uh, in this case, though, um, it, it was really fan experience that they were after. That was the number one goal without a doubt. What's also impressive is how this building has been meticulously cared for and maintained. Behind the scenes, this building has great bones. It's a phenomenal building. This is, a, this is unique because it allows the renovation project to really strongly focus on fan experience instead of using a large portion of the budget to have to fix costly problems that exist that are just inherent with the structure of the mechanical, electrical, or plumbing systems. Once this vision for the project was established and the desired improvements were identified, we immediately turned all of our attention to selecting the architects and the construction management team for the project and fulfilling the specific vision. We feel like it's critically important to match the right teams to the right projects and ultimately to the right clients. We conducted a comprehensive solicitation process and invited a number of the worldwide premier sports architectural firms to submit proposals. Ultimately, SCI Architects was selected because they demonstrated a unique ability for designing this arena and transforming it in exactly the manner that the owners want it to be. SCI led the Madison Square Garden renovation and they bring a very keen eye for detail to this project. We knew that SCI and Murray Bainan would be the right team to listen carefully to this particular client and deliver the most creative outcomes. Jim Olson and Murray will describe the planned improvements in just a second. More recently, we conducted a procurement process to select a construction partner. Salt Lake City is very fortunate to have some of the most incredibly capable construction management firms in the country. That made this selection process really difficult, quite honestly. We received a number of proposals and have ranked latent construction, as Steve mentioned, uh, at the top of the list. We're currently in the very final stages of completing a contract with Leighton, and we're excited to bring them onto the project team so Murray and I, and ICON and SCI, can work in complete form. We now have a full project team, one of the highest quality you could imagine, and we're ready to fly forward. 
We're honored to work with Larry H. Miller Sports Entertainment and cannot be more excited for this project. This is an incredible city and an incredible client. We have all the ingredients for success. We have no doubt that we will all rise to the challenge and deliver this project on schedule and on budget. And most importantly, continue a lasting legacy here in Salt Lake City. I look forward to the next time that we all get together in a big gathering like this to celebrate a job well done. Now it's time for your first look at the renovation plans for the Vivint Smart Home Arena. To take us through the detailed presentation, please welcome Jim Olson, president of Vivint um, home, Smart Home Arena, and Murray Bainan, principal with SCI Architects. Guys. Thank you, Tim, and thank you, Steve. It's a privilege to share our plans with you today. I couldn't be more excited about what these renovations will mean in creating an exceptional guest experience when you come to visit Smart Home, Vivint Smart Home Arena. From top to bottom, from the solar roof to the locker room, from upper bowl to lower bowl, there are changes in store for the benefit of all. These physical changes are grounded in some principles that guided our renovation decisions. We looked through the prism of, of customer service, safety, sustainability, innovation, technology, and connectivity. The arena will maintain its in intimate setting for basketball, but will be packed with amenities that reflect those standards and meet the expectations of our guests for sports and any other event that we hold here. Murray, welcome. When we say this arena has great bones, as you started this process, what were the observations that you had about this arena? Jim, let me just take two seconds before I start that because uh, I just wanted to echo what Tim had said from SCI's point of view. We thank Gail Miller, we thank the Miller family, we thank senior management for this incredible opportunity. We think this is one of the most spectacular arenas in the country that will only become better. I've only done sports and entertainment for well over 30 years, and I'd say the vast majority of that is what we call multi-use spectator arenas. And I can say with incredible certainty that Larry Miller got it right 27, 28 years ago when the vision was painted on paper and then was eventually built. And it's not just the points which are so important that Tim said about functionality behind the scenes and the, the bones, as we often say about a building, but it's on so many other levels of a great piece of architecture and the fan experience. Let's talk about a couple. Um, the exterior, first of all. I mean, I think it was sheer brilliance that he took essentially a rectilinear building and turned it 45 degrees on the site. That you now have three incredible public plazas that are open to the public 365 days a year which is very, very special. And as well, if you know how these buildings work, and you can see it with the circus moving in at the moment, tour event, move in and move out with 18, 20, 24 trucks and that is essential. And that's what turning the building as well gave us in the southwest corner. As well, what he did, interesting enough, and many of you may not appreciate it, but he moved, and not at a cheap cost, the whole event level two levels below grade. You may not be a parent, but what that means is approximately 40% of the people moving into the, coming into this building, they don't have to go upstairs or escalators or elevators. They're coming directly in to the main concourse and going down to their seat, as opposed to many buildings which made the mistake of the building being totally out of the ground. One other aspect, there's something, I think if you look at architecture in this country over the past 10 years, that's driven it, and it's glass, more glass, more transparency and all that. Well, it was here 25 years ago. Just look at the building. It's still got more glass and more transparency than any other place. And I think because probably it's looking out at spectacular views that many other cities just uh, envy. And finally, I think as you still drive by the main streets adjacent to the arena, that there's something about this building that's Simple, powerful, it's a great piece of architecture. It stood the test of time. It wasn't gimmicky. It wasn't all sorts of doodads added to the thing, etc. And I think that's what makes it very special and distinctive. On the interior, just a couple points. One is, the key thing obviously, is the arena bowl. 
And we are looking today with all the new arenas built in the last 30 years, one of the most compact, one of the most vertical, which means more fans looking on top of the action than any other arena in the country. It is one great arena bowl. Yes, two major con uh, concourses on the building, but the thing that was as well done is all the additional space on the different levels. And a lot of what you're gonna to see today was because of that planning 26, 27 years ago that has allowed us to move into those spaces and make special guest ex uh, experiences for people coming to the building a year from now. Jim? Murray, thank you, that's great insight. Now let's embark on a journey of, of Vivint Smart Home Arena. The transformation begins on the roof where we are installing Vivint solar panels with the design and installation from Hunt Electric. This will be a full array of solar panels creating clean, renewable energy. The entire building will showcase Vivint Smart Home technology from security to services improving the overall experience for players, coaches, and fans. We'll, we will also be developing relevant and useful technology for our passionate fan base in the 2017-18 season with the new Jazz mobile app, high-speed internet, cloud-based technology, and predictive analytics. These in-venue technologies and arena innovations, plus the replacement of the seats, will transform the fan experience. We are literally and figuratively breaking down walls with an emphasis on improved customer circulation throughout the building, better connectivity between the floors with escalators and more common areas where people can gather, interact, partake of food and beverages and enjoy the event together. New seating options abound with hospitality and ticketing options. There will also be sponsor activation opportunities in many of these refurbished areas. One example is the new special social zones on level six. The before and after images highlight how the atmosphere will be changing for the better in the upper bowl. The four corners of the arena will be opened up with casual gathering space where you can still stand and watch the game. It will be a fun mingling atmosphere with vibrant, in these vibrant social corners. The view will be spectacular, whether you're looking out at the cityscape or into the arena bowl. Fans will be able to walk around the entire upper level of the arena. Groups, companies, large parties, and others will be able to gather in these designated areas for special occasions with their own catered hospitality. The main concourses on levels three and five will continue to be the main thoroughfares for lower and upper bowl seating. As these before and after images show, the new concourses will be cleanly designed, brightly lit, and video saturated walkways that will help ensure that you don't miss a moment of the action. New entries will be clearly marked with an improved signage system. Movement, of, movement among the floors will be eased with multiple staircases, elevators, and a new escalator. So Murray, how do these changes affect the customer flow and allow people to move around and interact more freely? Let's deal with flow first. Um, I think you all come to the building and I think congestion is always a concern. And when you overlay the issues we've had to deal with security and things like that over the last 10 years, it has not made it easier. What we've done, and I think the first area is on level three. Definitely most people, we know that by statistics, are coming in uh, from the Northeast. And what we've done, as, which you'll see in a few minutes, is added 12,000 square feet of space, public circulation space. That's approximately 40% increase over what that concourse is today. What that will allow is that we can now deal with security when people are warm and dry, and we have a good amount of space between the security area and the ticketing area for people not to develop and get into uh, a congested area there. As well, it allows for a spectacular new store, uh, not in that 12,000, by the way, and new ticketing right at grade level. These other areas that on the upper concourse, serving the upper bowl, um, if you look at, and we live by statistics of the number of square foot per person, it is lower than the lower concourse. 
So I think the solution here has been brilliant. What we've done is really make the level above a mezzanine for the upper bowl. We're essentially increasing the amount of square footage again for public circulation and hospitality by 35% for the upper bowl. But as well, what we're doing in those areas is opening up too, so all of the people in the upper bowl can just walk from the back of their seats up two or three or four or five rows right into a hospitality area, which I should say has some of the best views in the, country, in the city of the surrounding countryside. Now, public interaction, and certainly you saw from Jim's pictures of the L6 social zones, as we call them, which are so open and have the great views uh, across uh, the city. We have new kitchens there. Kitchens are 15 foot back from 800 lineal feet of openness to the bowl. It's a great area to hang out. There'll be seating. There'll be, I really feel like a restaurant that's open for anybody who wants to sit in the upper bowl to come up there. On L3, I think we all know the areas in the corners that were part of the original architectural, uh, I think they were called lanterns, and it's a great name for them. 60 foot high, 60 foot of glass on two sides, spectacular spaces. We are creating new restaurants pretty well in there. Very new open kitchens. You'll be seeing the hamburgers cooked in front of you. Uh, very, very special, very new, and as well, I think that's a social zone that will be the highlight of the main public concourse. Jim? Thank you, Murray. You can see a lot of attention and detail has gone into making sure we have a great experience for every fan that will walk into the arena. But there are also many of our patrons that experience arena events from the vantage point of clubs and suites, where you can enjoy the event in style. On level four, our 47 suites are being remodeled for a seamless transition between the lounge area and the event seating. It is a fabulous location to entertain top clients, business associates, and family and friends at Utah's top sports and entertainment events. Exceptional sight lines, impeccable surroundings, and first class amenities add up to the ultimate entertainment experience. The Executives Club is also being refurbished in design and services. This exclusive area is the optimal setting for hospitality, space to socialize, luxury dining with table and seat service, and great sidelines for a jazz game. As a club member, you have access to an exclusive lounge with the comfort of luxurious furniture and living room views. A new feature in the crea creation of a club on level four above the main entrance will be this area with up to 72 seats in its section. Whether you want a great view of the stage for a concert or have a special jazz night experience, it is a perfect setting to socialize and be a part of the great entertainment. On level two, the club experience will be undergoing a significant overhaul as we offer five unique experiences. Here's the before and after shots of the corridor, which will now be the entryway to all of these club options. Murray, how will the transformation of this hallway better serve our visitors and change access to the bowl? Um, probably the best place to start in that one is that we actually have many guests that come to the building who are sitting in row 10, 11, 12, 13, and to get to their hospitality area, this club, the Champions Club, the VIP Club, and in future some additional clubs, they are going all the way up to the row 26, on the main concourse and then coming all the way back down to the same level they just left when they left their seat. And some are actually going down to the Jazz 100 on the event level. What we're doing is creating in this corridor the dark brown openings that are on the right hand side of that wall. We are creating new access to the lower bowl. So from these hospitality areas you can be in your seat in one or two minutes. It's immediately adjacent. And I think we've certainly found in our focus groups with these people that that was a key, key component to get rid of this incredible amount of circulation uh, that they have to walk to to get to the clubs. The great thing about this is, again, it relieves the pressure on level three. So again, it's a win-win uh, from circulation and access point of view. Jim? 
So with this new access to the clubs, let's show you the artistic renderings of these areas. For example, in the room where we currently are occupying, this Champions Club will be transformed into Chalet Chic, as you can see by the, by the picture that's up. Next door from us right here, the VIP Club will become the Salt Flats. The current administrative offices on the second floor will become new locations for the Jazz 100 Club to be known as the Canyon. The Legends Club will be known as the Sky Club. And the brand new Sports Club. These clubs will each be distinguished by their thematic atmospheres and exclusive settings. On level one, the Lexus Club remains the marquee location for sophisticated dining access to courtside seats and the ground floor sights and sounds of the game with the players, coaches, and other jazz entertainment. Now, here's the next game changer. Along the first floor corridor, there will be four, literally only four, new suites that will go out into primetime arena seats. Let me just go sideways for a second and mention that two of these four have actually already been sold. Uh, we'd like to thank Vivint Smart Home, our naming rights partner, who has, uh, who has uh, committed to one of these suites, and also Kim Gardner of the Gardner Company, who will also be uh, occupying the second one. So, so there's only two left to go. Um, but from these suites, you will enter your floor suite from the back hallway and go out through your own private portal to your box seats in the stands. These floor suites have the comforts of home with a fireplace and a living room atmosphere. But just steps away is your doorway to the excitement of the arena. The premium hospitality experience has never been better at Vivint Smart Home Arena. Murray, you've seen the evolution of clubs and suites at venues through the years. What are the owners and their guests looking for, and how will you meet their expectations? Well, let's talk about suites first. Um, definitely number one is more space. We seem to all want more space to mingle and meet people in the private suites. We want lounge furniture to sit and chat and enjoy it. Uh, we even want buffets, more buffets and more kitchens. Uh, with the existing suites, on what we call level four, it was a challenge. And I think we came up with a very special solution, and that was we are removing the restrooms in the suites and making common VIP-only restrooms on that level around the whole 360 concourse. That's increasing the amount of social space in the suite by about 30%, quite a considerable amount. The second key issue is social. Um, millennials say they're teaching us how to be more social and more interactive with each other, but I don't believe it because ever since I've been having parties at home with good friends, and I think most of you would agree, I don't understand, I've never understood why everybody ends up in the kitchen. <laughs> but they do. And that's where people want to be, and that's where the action is, that's where the fun, everyone's standing, grabbing chips, colas, whatever. So we've moved the kitchen right to the edge of the arena bowl right so that you are there with the action standing watching and you can sit, step down a few steps and sit in the seats. And that I think will transform it. Yes, we still have the living room in the back. If you want to close a business deal, you just want to have a private chat with a great friend, you can go back there and do that. Uh, and that will be uh, what we have there. Finally, the wow, Jim really covered it on level one, the suites, but 16 foot high ceilings, fireplaces, when you go and walk in, you're 20, 30 foot away from the jazz locker room. I mean, it's almost like an all access pass to be in these. It is very special. I think it is unsurpassed, unequaled in the country and will be a very special talked about product. Um, clubs, I think the key thing here is that Actually, architecture was a lot easier 25 years ago than it is today because when we found a good design for a club in those days, we would do it throughout the whole project. That's what we would do. And the airports were the same way. Man, we've got the interior, one interior pallet, we're doing the whole thing like that, a million square foot. Well, that doesn't cut it anymore in hospitality. And what we have done here is create a variety a theming variety, an architectural variety, the food and beverage variety. So yes, you may be in your club that Jim just went through one evening and you're invited to another one a week later that is one of the others. It's a totally different experience. Not better, not worse, 
but a totally different neighborhood of people that are in that club, and that has been a key thing in the design of the building. Jim? Thanks, Murray. The premium space is going to be a big part of this renovation, and we appreciate Murray and his team's expertise in, in that area. Our guests come to Vivint Smart Home Arena for the sports and entertainment, but now you will want to come early and enjoy what's cooking with a revamped approach. The cuisine options will meet everyone's taste. Cooking stations are being installed throughout the arena, which will allow us to have live kitchens in the clubs and concession stands for innovative catering options. On the main concourse, the four corners will showcase preparation of fresh food. There will be gourmet hamburgers in one, hand-tossed pizzas in another, healthy choices with salads in a third, and a Mexican fiesta and, uh, in the other with tacos and burritos, all freshly made on site. We'll still maintain a mix of our local favorites of Cup Bop, Chick-fil-A, Swig, and others. With Squatters and Wasatch Brew Pub, visitors can enjoy our local restaurants while in the arena. Of course, it is Utah, and ice cream will be served in abundance with multiple vendors. From the sixth floor social zones to the lounges on the fifth floor to the pubs on the main concourse, people will be able to gather, sit down, and enjoy a meal. It'll be a complete evening of entertainment at the arena. Murray, how does this design address the, challenging, the challenge of improving the dining experience from concession walk-ups to gourmet meals? Well, first of all, I don't think anybody's going to deny it in this uh, audience that food and beverage is a phenomenon over the last 10, 15 years that's incredible. Uh, I think Tim would agree that uh, nobody does more surveying and testing in that than the NBA. And it's interesting, the NBA in last year's analysis came forward with that food and beverage is the number two importance of in-game experience in NBA games, and that's from about a number 10 position five years ago. It's changing and changing incredibly quickly. We have a lot of concessions and a lot of kitchens, kitchens that none of you would ever see. We are touching every one. We're refreshing them, we're redesigning them, we're adding a lot of new equipment uh, just to really with one major objective in hand, and that is to deliver hotter food, fresher food, and deliver it faster to the customers. And that's the type of investment that's going on behind the scenes. The other big thing, and boy, we see it all the time, is give me some wow, give me some more wow experience. And I think you can see by this, in this incredible space I talked about before, uh, and this is an initial rendering, but gives you the feeling of just an incredible wow. And behind this whole thing is really a sit down restaurant, if you wanted to call it that, that does not exist today. And this is equaled as well up for the upper bowl on level six, a very special area. Jim? Thank you, Murray. You've seen all the public areas. Next is a bonus for you with a sneak peek at the inner sanctum of the Utah Jazz, the new locker room. On and off the court, we are poised to compete across the board in the NBA by offering the best facilities and services for our players. The Jazz are an extended family, and as we want to treat our players and fans as such. This is our home away from home. Now let's go outside. There are currently 10,000 parking spots within a two block radius of Vivint Smart Home Arena. Downtown also has an additional 20,000 spots, plus a free tracks ride in the downtown corridor and green bike stations. When you arrive, you will be welcomed and enter into a large indoor atrium. We are building an extended entryway that will bring you inside at the street level for the ticket and box office services. This will be the new place to meet and greet as you gather for an unforg unforgettable night at the arena. The plaza will feature a video board for outside watching parties, a new marquee with full circle video capabilities, and a mini stage where performers will welcome you to the plaza. With nearly 12,000 square feet of space, this large indoor lobby will have entertainment, special displays, and access to the 3,000 square foot retail jazz team store. Murray, how will these changes affect the way spectators enter the arena? I think everyone, again, I think I mentioned before, would agree that the main entrance we know statistically is on the Northeast. And first, what we've done there is 
as you step on the curb, as you step on the property, you're going to know you're going to some special event. There's going to be an energized public plaza with entertainment, with the video boards, possibly hoops set up for kids to try out, band platforms. It will change, be a constant change, but very, very special that really gives you the intro of the excitement for the evening. Then, as Jim talked about the plaza, and I talked before about are we, does this, excuse me, the uh, atrium, the entry atrium, does this ever solve the security issues and doing it in a pleasant way for guests and customers and the ticketing issues, plus providing an additional platform for entertainment and the whole entrance experience and the activation of that. It's exciting. Um, it's a double height retail store that I think people will be blown away with of how special it is. Um, and I think that the key thing we see in the whole entrance thing from the time you're dropped off is it's an energy and there's an energization of that whole area that will be extremely special. Jim? Thank you very much. With today's announcement, we are formally embarking on a year-long $125 million renovation that will elevate the guest experience. You've already enjoyed the new video display system over the past few seasons. Now we're making even more improvements. From environmental and technological innovations to great gathering spaces like clubs, suites, social zones, it's going to feel brand new. This will truly be arena rising. We are raising the bar for all aspects of the building, in design, in service, in atmosphere, in access, and in style. In the end, we believe this arena renovation project will be a worthy successor to the original arena built by Larry H. Miller 25 years ago. The arena will go dark next summer following this current jazz season to accommodate the renovation. We will open the new world-class Vivint Smart Home Arena in October 2017. You will be able to watch the construction process inside and outside through the vivantarena.com website. There will be videos, time lapse, photos, and descriptions of the arena rising. We will provide periodic updates, and you will be able to witness the transformation online that will position the arena in downtown Salt Lake City for another 25 years. Finally, Murray, as you have participated in other projects around the world, what distinguishes these future plans for Vivint Smart Home Arena? Well, it's distinguished by, Jim, essentially where we, we started uh, 25 minutes ago. It's distinguished by the existing building and how special and unique it is in the country and that it works very well. What we're really doing is an overlay, an overlay of 21st century issues, security, circulation, energy, hospitality, food and beverage, technology, of course, without question. We're really updating the building to what people have learned to expect as they're going out to a very, very special evening of live sport and live entertainment. Most importantly, from the outset, we stated with the Miller family and with jazz management, that we weren't going to tear things down. We were going to minimize that. We were going to build upon it and make something and do it sensitively to not lose the original vision, just make it better and better. Thank you. Well, as you can see, as uh, Steve previously said, we have definitely put the A-team on this project. We are absolutely thrilled to be working with Icon Venue Group, SCI Architects, and Leighton Construction. It's a big year ahead, and I'll now turn the program back to Steve Stark, Starks for our final segment. Thank you, Jim and Murray. In Arena Rising, as you can tell, Vivint Smart Home Arena has been built and will be renovated for the future with the amenities needed to attract the very best in sports and entertainment to Utah. Now it is my pleasure to welcome to the podium for some closing remarks, the owner and chairman of the board of the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies. Before I do, I just wanna go off script for a second. And I can't help but think and have felt today that Larry somehow and in some way has been watching and participating with us and uh, is proud 
of his family and for those of us that have participated in this project and what this will mean uh, for the company that he gave his life in building. And so with that, I'll turn the time over to Gail. Thank you. That's been a wonderful presentation. So much work and effort went into it, and thank you for being here to share it with us. About 28 years ago, Larry stood in front of the city council to plead for permission to get this land and build an arena on it. And his words were, we have an opportunity to do something very special that will last for 25 to 30 years. I can't believe that time is over that this building is ready for a renovation. We have an opportunity to do something very special that will last another 25 to 30 years. Only this time it's even more fun because we can see what we have to work with and we know that we can create something even better than it was the first time. When this arena was originally being designed, the architect used the words lantern and light to describe it. He said the windows would emanate a light from within that called to the people who were passing by <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, and would invite them to be a part of what's going on inside. He said, I want people to see that light and say, I want to go in there and see what's going on. I believe that we've been that lantern. The events that have happened in this building have created many wonderful memories for our city, our family, and people beyond our community. From the first concert, which was Oingo Boingo, to the playoffs in 1997 and 1998, to the circus that's here today, and everything in between that has filled our lives with excitement and enjoyment, we have tried to be a light. This building has actually been my home away from home since 1991. And our employees have been the hosts and hostesses that have invited our guests and welcomed them into our living room and to make them feel welcome and comfortable. And they've done a great job. I want to thank them for representing our family <clears throat> so well over these years. As the original building was dedicated in 1991, and has neared the end of its projected lifespan, we as a family have recommitted ourselves to the vision. The Miller family has always been committed to doing things the right way. The reason for updating and remodeling this arena to a state of newness and current design and efficiency is to continue to enrich lives to enhance the experience for all guests and performers, and to incorporate innovative in my environmental and energy improvements, and to help revitalize this area of downtown Salt Lake City. And I might add, to provide our team with the tools necessary to bring home a championship. We've worked together with our community leaders and we've determined that we can have a win-win approach to this project. We want to accomplish the arena's renovation objectives and to make sure this project contributes to meaningful public programs and services. During the arena's original construction, our entire family was involved. We put our time, our energy, and our emotions into the project. We visited the project almost daily. Larry could recite how many yards of concrete and how much rebar, how, how many risers, and everything else about the building to anyone who would listen. We personally picked species of trees that are on the plaza. We also visited the workers who spend day and night creating this building even during the cold winter weather. We had weekly barbecues for them to show our appreciation. We greeted and shook the hands of every guest during the grand opening. 
Over the years, we've entertained dignitaries, associates, and childhood friends at jazz games, concerts, Disney on Ice, the Olympics, hockey games, and many other events. We've always been proud to be here because our employees have taken pride in what they do. When we were building the arena, Zane, our grandson, was about a year old, and every time we would come close to the construction site, he would shake his fist and say, there it is, there it is, and be so excited to ride around on a golf court, a golf cart to be able to look at the construction and the progress that was being made. Greg was able to do all the signage in the building, which he did a great job of and our other family members were as involved as they could be. It's been and still is a very meaningful part of our lives. It serves as a, it, excuse me, it serves as an extension of our homes and our activities for many nights a year. Larry and I invited the world into our living room and we invite all of you to continue to enjoy it with us as we create new spaces and refresh the finishes. Because of our history and our deep love for this community, my family and I take our responsibility as stewards over this arena and the Utah Jazz and the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies very seriously. It's because we feel so strongly about this important legacy that we're making a major investment, which is double the original cost, and taking other important steps to ensure that this arena serves as a signature venue in downtown Salt Lake City, bringing the community and its people together for many more years. Thank you for being here. This building has been referred to as the house that Larry built. Now it will be the house that Gail rebuilt. Thank you to Gail, the Miller family, and to all of you for being here today. As Jim mentioned, the majority of the work will begin after this upcoming jazz season, which we hope doesn't end until June, after the Jazz win an NBA championship that Gail just referenced as our ultimate goal. Uh, however, there will be projects that will be able to start early. And so we ask for the patience of jazz fans and other guests as you please pardon our dust as you come to the arena during the season. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Frank Zhang, Don Sterling, and the Renovation Announcement Committee for their great work in producing today's event. This concludes our formal arena renovation presentation. For members of the media, our participants will be available for additional interviews here on the stage. For everybody else, please stay, visit with friends, and enjoy refreshments located around the room. Thank you.